First, there's something about entropy that I got wrong in the last video. I said entropy is the average amount of information that we receive every time we get a symbol from an information source. However, that is incorrect. I want to make it very clear that entropy is not information, because entropy is uncertainty. And uncertainty is what we have when we don't have information. Entropy and uncertainty are the opposite of information. Again, information is what you get when your uncertainty is reduced. The difference between the amount of uncertainty you have before you receive an outcome from an information source and the amount of uncertainty you have afterwards is the amount of information you have. If you're flipping a fair coin, you have one bit of uncertainty. And once you receive an outcome, you have no uncertainty, zero bits of uncertainty. And that comes out to one bit of information. So, entropy and uncertainty are measurements of how much information you don't have before you receive an outcome. And this is what determines how much information you will have once you do receive an outcome. It's easy to mix this up because it's a subtle distinction, but it's important. Also, someone wanted to know why we're using the base2 logarithm for everything. Why are we using base2 not just for something like a coin flip with two symbols, but also rolling a die with six symbols? This is because the number of symbols that the information source can give us has no bearing on the base of the logarithm. We're using base2 because we're measuring in bits, binary digits with two possible states. Now, why are we using bits? Information theory was created to figure out how much space we need to transmit and store information. And that's what computers and other electronic devices do. They use digital circuits, which are either on or off, zero or one. And that's why we use binary. Now, binary is a numeral system just like decimal. It's just that binary has a base of 2, while decimal has a base of 10. For example, when you have a decimal number like 529, moving from right to left, you can see that this number has 9 ones and 2 tens and 5 hundreds. Each place is a power of 10, because there are 10 possible digits. The ones place is 10 to the power of 0, the tens place is 10 to the power of 1, the hundreds place is 10 to the power of 2, and so on. Now, instead of 10, binary uses a base of 2, because there are only two possible digits. And when we have a binary number like 1011, moving from right to left, the first place is 2 to the power of 0, the next place is 2 to the power of 1, and then 2 to the power of 2, and 2 to the power of 3, and so on. So, it has a 1's place, a 2's place, a 4's place, and an 8's place. And if the binary number is even longer than that, the places are going to keep doubling, because they're powers of 2. So, for this binary number, we can see that there's 1, 1, 1, 2, 0, 4s, and 1, 8. Add that all together, and binary 1, 0, 1, 1 is decimal 11. Now, when we calculate the entropy or uncertainty of an information source, and we're using bits as a unit, this is telling us that when we do receive an outcome, we're going to need, on average, at least that many bits in order to store the outcome. For example, flipping a fair coin will give us one bit of information. And one bit is sufficient to store the outcome of a coin flip. It's either heads or tails, so we can store that as zero or one. One bit is enough. Now, rolling a fair die gives us about 2.585 bits of information. What would happen if we tried using only two bits to store the outcome? Well, two bits have four possible states. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. But a die has six possible outcomes. And four different states aren't enough to store six different outcomes. That's why two bits isn't enough for a fair die. Information theory lets us know, hey, you're not going to be able to pull this off. Two bits isn't enough. You're going to need at least 2.585 bits. And you do. If we use three bits, that gives us eight possible states. And that's enough to account for six possible outcomes. So if you were wondering if information theory has any practical applications, that's one of them.